Over the next two days, he'll be Private McKay, just another enlisted man starting at the bottom. First step, haircut. Second step, we'll get you into actual combat so you start feeling like a soldier. Then you'll be treated more like one. Sir? Private McKay, high 10. John! Stand up nice and straight. Eyes forward. Chin up, chest out. Nice. Now that's a haircut. That's what I like to see. That's how you look every morning. Got that? Yes, Sergeant. Okay, a couple things we've got to work out. You were late. We're given timings today. Sorry, sir. Don't well, look at me. Look straight ahead. And I'm not a sir. I'm a sergeant. Sergeant. If you call me out again, I will freak out on you. In a good way. Think of it that way. Yes, Sergeant. Do I, am I funny? No. Okay, don't smile then. You were late. Timings are everything. Why were you late today? I'm sorry, Sergeant. I was, uh... Getting a briefing. Oh, okay, that's an excuse, okay? We don't work on excuses here in the Army. Timing is everything. You will meet a timing. If you're given a timing, that is all that you're going to worry about, making that time. Yes, sir. Understood? Sergeant. I am a professional soldier. The troops that he's with in, uh, in the section are all professionals. This is Master Corporal Lafrette, Private McKay. We're going to act that way at all times. And I want to make it clear right off the bat that this is a serious thing. This is not, I'm not here to play games. All that's going to happen now is we're going to don our kit. Do I see? Help him out with his kid on. It makes you feel very guilty. It leaves you very much feeling, I've got to be on top of my game, always. I've got to be on time, because if somebody screws up, somebody could die. Head on in. Been in one of these before? Yes, sir. Right on. You don't know what it is, don't touch it. Simple as that. While he's training in Petawawa, this will be the minister's chauffeured limo, a light armored vehicle. The same noisy, crowded sweat box where soldiers endure hours patrolling dangerous Afghani roads. And he'll get to know his new family in ways he never imagined. Got any tats? No. No, hey? No. I don't think Shorty has any yet either. You? Oh, yeah. Doesn't everybody have their blood type tattooed on their arm? <laughs> I, take my, I take my job serious. I'll <laughs> say. To get through this, Private McKay needs to absorb some basic military training. Put your fucking feet together, recover! We're putting him through a crash course on how to survive on the modern battlefield. Boom! Get out on the ground! You're injured! Get the tourniquet on! Number one, go! Hey, get ready on that line. Jab! 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000! When I come by, Fucking remain in that position. Did I tell you to cover? No, Sergeant. In Canada, we train our soldiers to actually think, not just be robots. I don't want anybody in my section that's just a robot and will go ahead and do exactly as I tell them. Go! What the hell do That's two thousand three. He's not going to say why every time, but can take the initiative and he can think on his own. Don't step on that rope! Oh! Private McKay, you fucking wake up. Sorry, Serge. Smiley. You can do 25 with them. Get down. I want to hear you up here. Yeah. Begin. One, One two, two, three, four. four. Together. Five, six, six, seven, seven eight, eight, nine, nine ten. ten. He absolutely comes on strong, gives you the gears. <clears throat> Hoo-yah! So listen up, keep your ears open, your mouth shut, and do things the best that you can. Some of the best lessons come from the veterans who've been to Afghanistan and learned to survive in a place where the battle lines are never clear. If anyone does approach, get on the PRR quickly, say someone's approaching, be aggressive, get back, get back, go away. Go Can I teach you any Afghan, any Pashtun or any, any language before you go over? First two up, and begin. The obstacle course has been part of a soldier's training since the First World War. Use the legs, pump the legs. Step on that. No sitting minister has ever volunteered for this. Drop and roll, there you go, good job. Until now. Watch your knees going in. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Oh, look, we've we'll got another tunnel right. Next one, let's go. Oh, oh. You ever see that movie? Was it Stripes when he fell in the log? 
All right, these ones two bypass it. Let's go. Hey, if I was shooting at you right now, you'd lose your fucking head or kill the rest of the section. Get low. <laughs> You realize the volatility of the environment that you're in, and you can hit a trip wire. Uh, you can cost everybody by your own actions. Next two, let's go. Three points of contact. Make sure you got a good grip on it. Good job. Good job. Good, Doc. You go up one more step. Good, Doc. You got there it. You go. You can do it. Doc, he's uh, scared of heights. He opted to go. Uh, I agreed with him. It's good to build his confidence to do stuff like that. He got up there and it seemed that he uh, froze. You got it. Do it. Teamwork. Get Think about what you're doing. Get this leg over. That's it. That's it. He's got it. He's got it. Come on. That's it. Okay. Good job. Okay. Get the leg. Hey, three points of contact. Stay out there, McKay. Okay. Good job. Bring it down. He climbed up on the opposite side and assisted Doc over the obstacle, which, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I I'm pretty impressed. We won't tell a lot of private McKay that, though. You got her. Well, I'm trying to make up ground. I got reamed out pretty good this morning for being late. I, I hope maybe I got back a little bit of credibility. You got it. You got it. Pull, McKay. Pull. It's all about teamwork and helping each other through. Like, we all have our uh, weaknesses and strengths, and it's getting through them as a team. This is the last. Come on, get over that. Get over that. Move. Good job. Move it. Is that Brad McKay? That was intense. <laughs> yeah. Want to go again? Sure. <laughs> Give me five. Right now, no break. <laughs> <laughs> Army tradition dictates new recruits get a razzing from the old hands. And Corporal McNeil will get to do the honors with Private McKay. So we're going to test the suspension on the uh, lab to make sure uh, the springs are good to go. Go up through the uh, hatch here. All right, make sure you have a good space to jump up and down. So you're going to jump up and down while I check the suspension here. OK. Ready? Go. Yeah. Fucking higher. Come on. You're not even moving the lab. They all know even a cabinet minister doesn't carry enough weight to budge the springs on this beast. What do you think? How's the suspension? Stiff surgeon. Wonder why? It only weighs about 17 tons. Higher. You figured it out yet? <laughs> well done there, Private McKay. <laughs> You'll be an excellent soldier soon. Can I come down? It's nice to see that the section came up with that on their own uh, initiative. And of course, I hopped in there to help out a little bit, get them jump a little bit higher. But uh, that's something that we do with all uh, new recruits when they first get to a battalion. Drop the bag. Come mealtime, Private McKay finds himself a long way from the parliamentary dining room. Ooh, this is nasty. They're called MREs, meals ready to eat. And everything they say about army rations, well, it's all true. So, Big Mac, Sergeant, think you could live on this for six months? Uh, yes, Sergeant. <laughs> Next up, the section will take part in a full-on combat simulation, and Private McKay's got an awkward heavy stretcher strapped on his back. Is your stretcher comfy? I wouldn't call it that. Lighter than the radio. I'm being nice to you. In Afghanistan, the Taliban rarely fights pitched battles with NATO forces. Their deadliest weapon by far is the improvised explosive device. IEDs can be hidden almost anywhere, and they're powerful enough to kill a soldier, even inside an armored vehicle. During his tour, Corporal McNeil was rocked by IED explosions three times and somehow survived them all. I hit one on September the 16th, hit one on the 2nd of November, then I hit one on January 14th. I went home in March. You don't forget those? <laughs> no. When it happened the first time, were you prepared for that? Did you have any kind of idea what it was going to be like? No, I think the tendency is like, oh, that'll never kind of happen to me. And then it does happen, and you're like, holy shit. Well, most people don't hit one, then you hit a second one, you're like, well, it's chances of hitting a third, really. 